Hello and welcome to the first episode of my new kind of podcast YouTube series situation. I'm going to call it Running on Pixie Dust, I think. And this is episode zero. So this is the first trial run of this little series that I will be continuing. I really wanted this to be for listening on your hot girl walks, while you're cleaning, while you're multitasking, you could be cooking, you could be working, whatever you want. I did want this available on my YouTube channel. So if you're watching, welcome or welcome back. And you'll notice I have a special character on my t-shirt. And for those who are not looking and cannot see, it is Mr. Dopey himself. I am your host, Annika, and I have been a content creator on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube for a little bit now. I do a lot of Disney lifestyle on Instagram, at Annika's Paintbrush. Go ahead and give me a follow. And I also wanted to leave that open for any DMs, any suggestions for this little podcast series, and would love to chat with you about that. I've also been a YouTuber at Annika Hudak, and I do a lot of finance vlogs. I'm on a debt-free journey to paying off over six figures in student debt. It's been quite a whirlwind, and I've come a long way since I started my first kind of finance vlog on there, and I've actually been featured in a couple articles, so that's been really, really cool, and it's also brought me to meet new people. I've been on a couple of podcasts for not just my love of Disney, but for being so open about finances and money and being a creator while also working full time and how to juggle all of that. I actually do daily live vlogs on TikTok at Annika Hudak and just kind of to share what my days in the life look like as an Orlando local with my beagle puppy Cinnamon. If you're watching, she's tucked behind my uh, bed pillows there. Um, we might be able to see her get up and wander, but yeah, so I love creating content. I do work full time. I have a nine to five with Disney and it's been great. Like I love my job with Disney and I love being able to go to the parks and create fun Disney content. A little background about me is that I work in tech and digital for Disney as a product manager, but this is not affiliated with the brand or the company. This is just for fun and all thoughts and opinions are my own. Has to put that disclaimer out there. I am an avid Run Disney participant. So what is Run Disney? Well, it's the thing that's been draining my wallet for the past few years, but other than that, um, it's when you run races in the actual Disney parks and on Disney property, and some of the races go through backstage of some of the parks, some of them go park to park, some of them go to all the parks in one race, and by all the parks, I mean all the parks here at Walt Disney World. We've got Magic Kingdom, we've got Hollywood Studios, we've got Epcot, we've got Animal Kingdom, and we've got the water parks, Typhoon Lagoon and Blizzard Beach. So there's a lot of property to get running on, not to mention all of the Disney resorts as well. So that's just a quick little background on that, but it's something very unique because you dress up, you make friends. You get really fun, shiny medals at the end with super cute Disney characters. The theming of each race is just so much fun. Like there's Princess Weekend, there's Wine and Dine, there's Marathon Weekend, there's all of these different weekends that have different characters associated them with them for each year. So with distances, there's a few different options. It ranges from 
someone who's never run in their life to people who run PRs all the time and race these races. But that's what I kind of love about these races is that you can be literally anyone and you can do them and you can have so much fun and you can finish and get your medal and feel accomplished and go to Disney World. We've got the 5K distance, which is 3.1 miles. We've got the 10K distance, which is 6.2 miles. Half marathon, 13.1 miles. And the marathon, a full marathon, 26.2 miles. Now, all these distances are not offered with every race weekend throughout the year. So they're kind of sprinkled within each weekend. And now what I mean by that is... Let's say, for example, we just had princess registration the other day, and princess is very unique in that it offers a sunrise yoga, and then a 10K, and then a half marathon, and I actually just skipped over the 5K. It also offers a 5K, but there are things called challenges, and this is where I come in because this is my favorite thing to participate in. The challenges, meaning you complete more than one race in one weekend. And I know people who actually do all the races and all the events and everything for the whole weekend because you just got to do it all. But the most popular challenge and the one that I believe is at every race weekend, um, we've got the 10K and half marathon challenge, meaning you do both races on consecutive days and you get a third medal. So you get a medal for each race, the 10 game half, and then you get the challenge medal. So those are the most expensive options, but then you do get the extra medal and you get to feel, I don't know, better than everyone else for a little bit. <laughs> but something for marathon weekend, which is coming up in January, and I'll talk to you in a sec of how that weekend is very important for me. We've got the Goofy Challenge, which is actually a half and a marathon combined on the consecutive days that weekend. Or, 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 we've got da, 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 the Dopey Challenge. I have to take a deep breath after saying that one because, whew, it's really recently sunk in that I've signed up for this challenge. But some backstory, if you don't know, the Dopey Challenge is a 5K, a 10K, a half marathon, and a full marathon. Four consecutive days, one weekend, 48.6 miles. Miles. Just let that sink in. Wow, I'm exhausted just kind of explaining that. That... Ooh, yeah, I'm stressed. So I'm excited, though. I think it'll be great. <laughs> but yeah, just a little bit of backstory of those races, and I'll dive into that a little bit more um, in this podcast and in this lineup of episodes. So I did mention, you know, there's yoga for the princess weekend. There is a post-race party for the Wine and Dine race weekend, which is in November. There's all these fun things, and I get suckered into signing up for a lot of them. I don't do everything every time, but I like to do at least one race per weekend. I actually grew up a dancer and never, ever saw myself becoming a runner, but I really just started off going to these races for community and fun. Some of my past races I did were the Tinkerbell 5K, the Star Wars 5K, and those races were actually at Disneyland back when they were still allowed in Anaheim. But my mom actually, I think, found out about them from our friends growing up, and it was something that I did with my mom, and our friends did it with their moms, and it was just a really fun event. You know, you go and you share the hotel room. You wake up at 2 a.m., and you're running through the parks, and then you're done by, like, 6 or 7 a.m. You get to go to brunch after. It's like a whole event, and not to mention all the shopping because I'm a material girl, and I love shopping all the fun merch. But those were actually my first races. I was never serious about it. I didn't train. I was pretty athletic and would still work out and do a lot of walking and 
strength training and things like that. And so 5Ks were relatively easy for me. I had always been super, again, athletic and ex- I loved exercise. <laughs> and I don't mean loved as in I don't love it anymore, but that was when I was like really in shape and like really into it. And a 5K was literally nothing. But come the year 2019, I actually had already moved to Orlando which I guess a backstory, I'm originally born and raised in California, but my family lives in Oregon now, but now I am an Orlando local. My first half marathon ever was actually with the challenge for the Princess Weekend 2019. I completed the 10K and the half, and then I really got addicted to run Disney. It's, it's, it's a real thing. I completed my first half marathon ever after training in like, I want to say like four weeks. I literally signed up in January because I saw that the challenge was open. I had a friend running it and he was like, yeah, just sign up. Just do it. You can do it. (laughs) And so I did. And it turns out I could do it. I was just dying because I could only get so far in my training in just a few weeks. But after that, I was like, okay, I feel like I, need to, I can do anything. So I signed up for the Star Wars half. I signed up for the Castle to Chateau Challenge in Paris, which is where you complete one half marathon in the U.S. and one half marathon in Paris in the same year. And then I did the Wine and Dine Challenge, which is the 10K in half. And I did, what, like four half marathons that year? One, two, three, four. Yeah, I guess four after never having done one in my life. So that was an insane year. And I just, looking back, I can't believe I did all that. And went to France and did that at Disneyland Paris. Which, by the way, was actually really awesome. And I do recommend if they ever bring it back. So cross my fingers for that to come back. The funny thing is, I used to prep, like, the night before, too. Like, I wouldn't prepare for these races, like... I would just kind of run whenever and pick out whatever race clothes I wanted the night before and wasn't in really good gear and I think I had Brooks running shoes at the time but I think I only bought them after like my first half. I wore like some old Nikes for my first half which was a big mistake. Don't do that but... (laughs) Yeah, now I take them, like, seriously. Now this is a part of my personality, hence the whole podcast series coming up. So, as far as upcoming races, I've got the Wine and Dine Challenge this year, November. I've got the Dopey Challenge in January 2023. I've got Princess 10K. I just registered for that one, 2023, and that's next February. But I wasn't sure I wanted to sign up for Princess because... It's going to be so soon after Adobe Challenge and I will be dead. So I just signed up for the 10K because I knew I would have FOMO and I have something to look forward to after Adobe. So yeah, we did it. (laughs) But I wanted to touch upon why I wanted to do this series, why I wanted to even start this podcast vibe, which at the time that I'm filming this, I'm not even sure I'm going to actually load it into like podcast platforms. I definitely want to put it on my YouTube channel, so I'm definitely filming it and I want to have a little playlist going there because I just I've taken a little hiatus from YouTube, but I do want to come back to life. And I say that every few months, but it's fine. But I am running Dopey 2023 as I've said, and this will be my first time ever running it. And I cannot believe that I'm signed up and we don't even need to talk about the dumpster fire that was registration if you don't know registering for what's called marathon weekend which is that race weekend where the Dobie challenge takes place it was insane like there's I'm sure there's many podcasts out there and many paragraphs of people on Facebook groups who have a lot of choice words for how that day went but after hours of sitting on the Run Disney website and waiting my turn to register, I did get in for the Dopey Challenge and I just about passed out. But yeah, long story short, I got in and my close friends who were trying to get in got in as well. So 
very grateful and that's all I'm gonna say about that but I really wanted to make this to not only hold myself accountable but also inspire others and to just keep track of my progress have something to stick to that will really push me to stick to training as well so I really want to make this about training updates highs and lows of the week countdowns setting goals talking about my experiences and not only having conversations revolving around when Disney but also tap into the big picture including life updates so I really want to get on my soapbox here and just chat now with all that being said welcome to week zero <laughs> now why did I sign up for the Dobie challenge why would someone put themselves through that why on earth would someone run 48.6 miles in one weekend if they don't have to great question well like I said before, I do like to sign up for at least one race each weekend and participate in the Run Disney fun. I will say that there is just an energy at Run Disney races that is so unique and so overwhelming in the best way that it really just, that's what makes you come back. And I had signed up for the 10K this past January and... Showing up to that weekend, it was marathon weekend, and there were other people standing next to me who were doing the challenges, or maybe they were in the same boat as me, that they only signed up for one of the races, but being surrounded by people who are doing the Dopey Challenge, and knowing that this is not their only race that weekend, but they're still there, peppy and bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, and I remember standing in the corral at you know 3 a.m or whatever time it was it was really cold that weekend and you're kind of just standing there with nothing else to do I didn't have a running buddy for this particular race so I was on my own and just kind of feeding off of the energy of everyone surrounding me which is definitely possible and it's de it's just as fun but I was standing there and I think I literally started like just crying because there was just so much energy and everyone is so hyped and so pumped and people go all out with their costumes and the MCs for when we're standing in the corrals and the people who tell us to go across the start line, they are always hyping us up. They always play heartwarming videos. They interview people who or maybe running for a super special reason, running with their family, running with their friends, and maybe running for people who aren't here anymore. And it's so intense, so intense. So I thought to myself, okay, I have a year to train. <laughs> I have one year and I think I could do it. So, oh man, that, that's just bringing me back to a, a moment where it was like, okay, I think I want to do this, the Dobie Challenge. Like, what? <laughs> you asked me a year ago, I would have been like, are you insane? Are, are you on drugs? Like, that is not happening. But, I mean, look at me now. Anything's possible. I mean, actually, let's wait until I see if I can, you know, finish the races. But, um... <laughs> Yeah, I really, it just, you get fulfillment when you cross that finish line. I've done many races now, pretty much all Disney. I have done a couple outside of Disney, but to be completely honest, if I'm going to pay to run, it better be at Disney. So <laughs> I have something to train for and something with me is I need a goal with deadlines and there has to be money involved or else I'm okay with letting myself down kind of thing. Like I need there to be a date, a schedule, a penalty if I don't finish or you know something like that because I know myself and I have issues <laughs> with no motivation so yeah that is another factor but a fun fact is I actually just turned 26 last month in May and I had a really fun Disneyland trip. I would say it would have was the best trip of my life and I'm currently still editing all my TikToks and vlogs from that weekend but I turned 26 and guess how many miles are in a marathon 
26.2. So I really wanted to do 26 miles for 26 years. I'll still be 26 for the upcoming marathon weekend in 2023. And I just thought that that would be really cool to do. And then I can do it and hopefully, you know, finish. I'm talking as if I'm going to successfully complete, which mentally I'm just crossing my fingers that I do. But, you know, if I can complete that, I think that would be really, really awesome. So, yeah, I will run for Disney. <laughs> but coming into some of my highs and lows of the past week and kind of how I want to frame each episode of this podcast series, um, just kind of talking about the week as we go along. Highs were princess registration was last minute, and that went so much smoother than Dobie registration. I got in no problem, and I had my pick of the litter, and I decided not to do the sunrise yoga. I've, I've done it before with cast events, and I thought to myself, it's a lot of money, and I don't have a ton of money to be spending right now. I'm also house hunting. Oh my god. House hunting is the actual worst. Like, I thought it was supposed to be fun. And it's it's just been stressful. I've already had two offers. One upped by multiple investors with cash offers. So, that's also tying into a low later. But, another high is I got some new Hoka shoes. Now, if you're a runner or... A material girl. New running shoes are the best things ever. I'm currently in my Hoka Gaviotas and I actually got those with custom inserts back in a running store in Oregon when I was living at home during the pandemic and I got fitted and sized and you know you step on the things and you run on the treadmill and all that stuff which is something I really recommend doing and I I think I can speak for most runners and coaches out there that they'll tell you to go get custom fitted at a reputable running store with, you know, someone who you feel knows what they're talking about. But I went and got fitted for that, realized, I mean, I didn't just realize, but I actually saw the scan of how I had literally the highest arches on the scale. Like it was, it broke the scale practically because my arches are just a mountain high. Which I already knew, and from being a dancer, I kind of could already work with holding my weight on my feet differently. But custom inserts, man, those are fantastic. A lot of money, but, I mean, it's your feet we're talking about, and you're going to put a lot of miles on them. So I would say invest in your feet. But a couple of shoes that I did order were some more Hoka's. I got a pair just for everyday walking. And it's so funny because I saw this TikTok that Hoka are like the new Skechers Shape Ups <laughs> with how much like cushion they have and they're just so insane looking. But you know, I don't mind. I love my cushion Shape Up Hokas. So I hate feeling the road and I love platform cushion. Give it to me. So love that. But I just got some Bondi 7s. Those are all over the internet. And they're probably the cushiest shoe out there, to be honest. So I said, yes, thank you. Sign me up. And I also picked up, instead of going to get more custom inserts, I went to a Walmart and picked up some plantar fasciitis inserts that have really high arch support and gel heels, which I love. So we'll see how that goes. I haven't actually run in my Bondi 7s yet. So updates to come. But some lows of the week, because we got to just get them out there and then move on. But I was super low energy, and house hunting has really taken a lot out of me. It's just been so stressful. And I, again, have had offers declined. And I know it's it's not supposed to be like, all right, first house, first offer, let's go. But, like, wouldn't that be nice if that was the case? <laughs> Um, but even like the market's terrible right now and it is what it is, but I still want to hold out hope that I can find a house. I've got a couple months to figure it out still, but would love, would love to get me and Cinnamon into a nice house with a backyard. That's, that's the goal. But another low, it's been hot in Florida. I mean, summer is here. It reached the hundreds 
I think last weekend, humidity has been out of control. It's actually calmed down a little bit this week, but makes for running, oh, makes it a lot more difficult. Like you gotta get up really early and I am not an early bird. I struggle with early wake up calls, which is funny because I do so many run Disney races, but that's different. That's like a, it's race day. I feel like Anna from Frozen, it's coronation day, like hop out of bed, like get dressed. Like that's like an exciting day. Whereas a training day, it's like, it's not even light out right now. And I'm going to go for a run outside because I don't like running on treadmills. And do I take my dog with me or do I not? Because she's not a morning girl either. It's so funny, which is why she's still sleeping as I'm recording this. But yeah, it's, it's a struggle. And I, again, I went... On a couple of trips in the month of May, I went to Indianapolis for my mom's graduation for her master's from Purdue University. Super excited for her. But following that, my brother came and visited me. We did Disney World for the week and Universal Parks. And then following that, I did 10 days in California, which six of the days I spent at the Disneyland Resort. So it's my body was going through it. Like it was just back to back to back to back to back. And then I come back obviously got sick for a week, had to recover and get back to my routines, clean everything, you know, just a lot of, a lot of things on the to-do list. And I still, my apartment's actually a mess because I haven't fully recovered from my trips. (laughs) But I mean, we got to get to it. Training's coming up. We got house hunting. There's just a lot of stress. It's, it's good, good things. So definitely not complaining. It's just, it's a lot. It's just a lot. And that's, that's the reality. But my runs for this past week. (laughs) So I've been trying to do at least two 30 minute runs. Usually on Tuesdays and Thursdays and then do a long run like two or three miles, which I mean, not really a long run, but just to keep running on um, Saturdays. So I am prepping for dopey training. I have been for the past few months with continuing to run so that I can start Jeff Galloway's plan, which if you don't know, Jeff Galloway is a U.S. Olympian and he's run Disney's official training consultant. And it's he provides free plans, which is great. And they're all on the Run Disney website. So my thing is I've been trying to build up discipline and routines and working on getting up early. And I actually forced myself to run on some of my vacations in May. I took the running shoes took the running outfits. I actually run through or ran through downtown Indianapolis and that was kind of cool and had to run at like 6 a.m. But I mean, it was, it was kind of fun. I've never actually done that. And I know people talk about when they're runners, it's so much fun to actually explore the city that maybe you're staying in for vacation and whatnot. And I was like, well, why would you run on vacation? Like I was definitely that person. Like what on earth are you doing? But now that I've done it, and now that I'm in training mode, I could definitely see how that would be a good time. Um, And it just sets you off for your day. Like, you literally, you just kind of have that runner's high, and you feel good that you got something completed for the day, and just feel better than everyone else, which is great. (laughs) But... Yeah, I've been researching fuel and gear to prep for long runs. I've got a um, like a Camelback running vest thing that I actually bought a long time ago when I worked for Columbia Sportswear um, as an intern because they were headquartered in Oregon. I did a summer internship for them, and I bought a lot of outdoorsy things. And now future me is happy. Because of the whole keeping myself accountable thing, I've been... Keeping up on my running apps, I've got Strava, I've got RunKeeper, um, and then of course like Apple Watch Fitness app. I do run with an Apple Watch. I've been considering getting a Garmin, but I don't know if I can swing that right now. But I did start a Facebook group as well. It's like got a ridiculous name because it's just funny. But I did start a Facebook group with a couple of my friends so that we can all post and keep each other accountable, but also have somewhere to just share our victories, our maybe our runs that suck, or maybe our walks that were great in a cool place, and all of that stuff. So I think having a community is a huge aspect of keeping 
you want accountable, but also making it fun and giving you a space to brag about yourself and not feel annoying to people who don't care. These are people that care and want to root for you and they're on their own journey. So I really love that. Okay, so final little segment by the numbers. We've got our countdowns. Countdowns from the day that this is posted to my upcoming race, which is Wine and Dine Weekend, November 3rd through 6th, 2022. We've got four months and seven days. Oh my God, really? Only four months? That seems like a long time, but it's going to fly by. Okay, Dopey Challenge, January 4th through 8th, 2023. We've got six months, eight days. I did want to do like a day countdown, but that seemed a little bit harder to digest. So I did the four the days and or the months and the days countdown. <laughs> okay, so Princess Weekend, we've got February 23rd through 26th. Seven months, 27 days. Oof. A pace update for me. I have been running probably like... 12, 30 miles, 13 minute miles. And I've been doing intervals. So I've been doing like running a minute, walking 30 seconds and or I've been taking my dog with me. So then we have to like stop and you know, she has to take a break on the grass or whatever. (laughs) Um, So my goal is to kind of get to the 10 to 11 minute pace. And I think I can if I, you know, really push myself. So I have run and then like 10 50 minute range before in the past few races in the last couple of months but then I took vacations and ate a lot was not running a lot so there we are but I think my total mileage for the week I'm kind of guesstimating I really only did maybe like 10 miles because I did walk most of them because I was just so low energy this last week and mentally I'm like well officially training doesn't start till next week so (laughs) have a better update on that for next week speaking of next week next week's episode is going to be all about how first official training weekend goes or week goes I'm gonna have a guest of one of my good friends who she's a real runner and you will learn that about her when she comes on but She's someone who's actually done the Dopey Challenge multiple times. She has won her age divisions for so many races. Like, she's a rock star, so I'm really excited to have her on. But with that, I'm going to say that that's a wrap on episode zero. Thanks for tuning in, and get moving. (laughs) 